And hello everybody, it is 2 o'clock in my universe. And this is Nick McPhee and we're back to Unhindered by Coding. I hear rumors that there's like a football game going on between England and France that may be more interesting than watching the program, but we're going to do it anyway. Well, hello Izitsu, wonderful to see you again. So we're going to continue where we left off this morning um and see if we can ultimately get rid of the vecpop type and use just raw <laughs> raw vectors instead <coughs> so i'm certainly happy programming so it's all good um so before we start the vecpop to raw thing there was one piece actually is it sue that you had brought up in discord and for folks who want to participate, the QR code here on the left should give you a link to join the Discord site um, where we've been talking about some of this stuff. And there was a piece um, that you had suggested in Discord that we had then kind of moved tangentially to. And I wanted to at least bring it up and see how we felt about it. Um, so at the moment, we had dealt with the two random access selectors. So random and tournament both need to grab um, random elements of a population and return them. So they need to be efficient. They need random access. And we had, in the previous session, solved that by saying that the population needed to implement as ref of a slice of individuals. So anything that we could implement as ref of a slice of individuals, which included vector, um, vec, we could use as a population. And then uh, we can call as ref, and that's going to give us a, <coughs> um, a slice of individuals. Um, and then we can use choose or choose multiple to efficiently get um, elements out of the population. So another I, approach that it suggested in Discord was instead this trait called choose, where we would say basically that a population needed to implement the choose trait that would give us fast, uh, constant time access to individuals. Um, and so the choose trait would have two methods, choose and choose multiple, um, that would both take a random number generator and return an individual or uh, an iterator over a collection of individuals in the case of choose multiple. Um, and, uh, we could, and this is, I think, using generic associated types because we have to introduce this um, a lifetime. Um, and so we can talk about the lifetime of the individual as it relates to the lifetime of the thing implementing the trait, which in our case would be a population. So this allows us to connect the lifetime of the population and the individual inside of that population in a useful way. Um, so that would not have been possible in the same way, at least in stable, just a month ago. It hadn't been that long that GATS got added. Um, and then is it who had shared an example of implementing this for VAC, um, uh, yes, right. So you, you could have had a four angle bracket A uh, to introduce the lifetime. Uh, but this is kind of nice. So like this. Um, and then we could implement this for vector. Um, and in, we're basically just calling the relevant um, uh, L, uh, methods in the slice random um, package, choose and choose multiple. Um, and they take slices and the random number generator and the amount, and then they return the relevant thing. 
So these are just sort of thin wrappers around those methods that are available um, because we can, for a vector, we can say as slice and then we get these things. So the question really is, do we prefer the choose approach to the as ref approach? Um, the as ref approach requires, it kind of ties us to um, implementations with slices and stuff um, more directly. Whereas this doesn't say you have to have those things. Um, you don't have to be a vector or an array. Um, you just have to implement these two pieces. Um, and notice that either of these could be implemented inefficiently. You could impl implement these so that they would iterate through a full thing if necessary. Um, and <clears throat> if you had... If we go back to the island model idea where the population is distributed across a collection of islands and you wanted to be able to choose from the entire population, all the islands together, you could implement choose across in some way across all the islands and still make it pretty efficient because you could say basically pick an island at random and then call choose on the vector of individuals in that island um, and choose multiple again could be implemented pretty efficiently on an island whereas the as ref with the uh, slice with an island would be much more complicated because you really have to get all the individuals and then put them together into a single um, vector or slice or something um, array, and that would definitely be a more complicated business than implementing choose or choose multiple. So I had actually kind of liked the choose thing. Um, and I guess the question then is whether we would prefer to deal with this first and then the VecPop business. And I, I, in a perfect world, I kind of think doing this first, but in the actual world, I sort of think we'll do the VecPop thing and leave this as just a big comment to be moved somewhere and dealt with um, later because I felt like we had made progress on the VecPop thing and this assumes basically that we're acting on vectors. Um, and so if we can just get rid of vector pop, then I think thinking about how to deal with this would be easier after that. So that's what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out for now. We're going to go back to, um, uh, let's see, did I say that? Yes. Um, we're going to go back to, uh, population and think about what we were doing there. Um, and we had left with, we had added this constraint that the individual associate, this, the associated type individual in population needed to implement the trait individual, which is coming from the crate individual or the module individual. Um, and that turned out to be somewhat limiting. Um, it was going to bleed all over the world. And among other things, it prevented us from making a population that was just a vector of numbers, which would be nice to do for testing. Right? This is a nice little test. We got this little vector of numbers. And we say that the best is 9 because that's the highest value. Um, and that would be a nice thing to be able to keep. And we lose that if we require that any population implement individual. That's a reasonably constraining thing. So I'm kind of inclined to try to make that go away and think about how we would mo need to modify this generate so that... Um, 
we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to see if I can make that disappear. And now we're going to have all kinds of weird things happen. So I could constrain generate here to be where um, self colon individual implements individual. Ah, oh, that actually worked. I wonder why I didn't think about that before. Um, I'm going to remove that comment. That doesn't mean anything. So we're saying self-individual needs to implement individual. Now, and then we have to say self-individual. We have to think of it as an individual, which then allows us to get the genome. We need to think of it as an individual, and that allows us to get test results. Um, and genome will have to implement borrow of H, and H is not sized. Okay. Um, change line 36 to... Oh, yeah, right. So we had started adding the bound... And this is going to be going to get us in trouble. Um, I wonder, we probably still need send, but maybe we don't need individual. Whoa, bad things happened. Um, oh, yeah, because this is generate. So we do actually assume um, Actually, I guess we were just saying I implements individual plus send. And you said it was fine before. Let me back up. Oh, yeah, because it was just that I needed, so we weren't saying I was an individual. We need, we're saying that I implements the trait generate and send. And that requires that we provide, um, that we can generate individuals. And so that's what we need is to be able to generate uh, a vector of individuals. Okay, that makes sense. And... So yes, that was fine. I got excited. Um, right. Um, so we're implementing this so that, oh yeah, we're implementing, I implements this and generate implies individual. So we had individual implicitly through the generate. That makes sense. Cool. Um, and now, uh, does everybody actually compile? Uh, looks like everybody does. Best is happy again. Um, so, um, can we run? Got a bunch of warnings because I deprecated VecPop. Cargo test. Cool. Okay. So that actually works. And now we just have to go through and in principle, we ought to be able to get rid of every instance of VecPop and replace it with just a vector. And then we can get rid of the whole VecPop thing. That's pretty exciting. Um, so there are many places where this is being used. Let's see. So there's a bunch in population. There's a bunch in lib. And there's a couple of bit strings, and there's some in main. Those are going to be in the tests. Um, so let's deal with uh, population first. Um, so, oh, actually, no, we probably want to deal with this 
last because we just want to replace all the places that refer to this and then we'll just get to delete that so let's actually do that last so let's go to lib 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 oops lib is not open wah, 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 okay so we want to get rid of this we'll do that in a second okay so here um oh yeah probably probably a good idea because this could get kind of messy and we want to be able to back up to this because it's pretty clean at the moment and things work um so yes thank you so we've implemented we've created a trait generate and we've implemented that for vector and i won't bother committing that right now we can just leave that dangling because i don't think that'll have to change um uh add new population generate trait and impl for vec um trait which generates a population given the ability to generate random genomes and run tests on them uh, we also implemented that new trait for back um, all of this is with the long-term goal of eliminating the VECPOP type. Okay. Now, come back here. Okay, so VECPOP new bitstring population. So this is, so maybe we should go to bitstring first, actually, because there's two references to back pop there um uh one there and one down at the end uh yeah so we have this um imp this new bit string population method on vec pops um and we can't implement that on VAC because we can't add a method to an external type. So I don't think we can just say VAC here. Whoa. Well, that was totally not helpful um, because I don't think we can make changes to an external type and we'll, it'll yell at us. Yeah. Cannot uh, define an impulse for a type outside of the crate where the type is defined. So that's not going to work. Um, so that could be a floating meth, just a floating function. Um, or, oh no, it could be a an implementation of, you know, I guess it's just a floating function because we don't have a trait that does this, um, that this would implement. And the closest thing is the population generate, which we're going to call. Um, so I think this is really just going to be a floating function. Hub fun new bit string population. Actually, is there any reason not to just pull this out of here? And then figure out what bad things happen. Um, and let's comment you out. Boom. 
So this is going to return not self, but vec of EC individual bit string R. So that means we're going to need a R here. And we don't want self. Hmm. We need vec generate. Is that going to work? Yeah, it should. So I think we could just say vec generate. Now we probably may have to import something. Is, oh, is this going to be like population generate? No, maybe. Yeah, no, because it's not a free floating function. Because um, it is, we are saying, where are we? Yeah, here that a vec should have a generate method. Population, oh, I needed just more stuff. Oh, I get it. Because generate, little g, no. Uh, is this a use thing? Oh, no, I need to. Oh, the type generate is private. Well, that's going to be a problem. Uh... Do, 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 do. Pub, yep. That's going to make a difference. And now here R needs to be send, right? That was what I was saying. Um, yeah, R needs to be send. So where R is send. Oof. Okay. Um, so you think this ought to work, which is what I started with, and that didn't, wasn't happy. Oh, but now there's a use that wasn't there before. So maybe the problem actually was the privateness meant it didn't give me the thing I wanted it to give me. Um, so generate. No. Oh, because we've got two generates now. Um, yeah, so which one do we use the most? Uh, we don't use an individual at all. Is that really true? Uh, might be. In fact, I suspect it may be. Maybe we can get rid of the individual generate here. Ah. And then this yeah okay so then that works cool um that is nifty so now we have a function instead of a method but that shouldn't be a problem yeah cool Okay, so I think that actually worked. Uh, oh, um, hang on. There are some compiler errors up here. 
is this individual um impling yeah so this is generate on individuals uh so i'm gonna have to i am using both uh individual generate and um population generate so i'm gonna have to um import generate as use crate individual generate as underscore I didn't know that was a thing uh, holy moly so we're making it available but we're not ever using the name kind of cool and that actually did seem to solve the problem uh that's pretty nifty um and in fact we could probably bring both of them in that way because we're never using this name either We never explicitly refer to those names. That's kind of nifty. I didn't even know. Um, that wouldn't work if the two generate methods conflicted, if the trait was applicable to both. But in this case, we don't have to worry about that because we're using them in context where it's clear which one we're using. So here, since this is an EC individual, this is individual generate. And since this is a VAC, this is a population generate. So it knows what to do and life is spiffy. That is very cool. And then I would get rid of this and I go back to the, oh, so I want to make sure, do I have to tidy up anything up here? I guess I got curly braces I don't need. Um, and then lib is busticated um, because we call that and it's not part of VecPop anymore. It's just a floating function. And this probably needs to be imported. So it's available. Returns the right thing. And um, line 77. Here we're passing in the new takes a population and we needed to take a vec instead of a vec pop. So we gotta go find generation. So the new on generation, oh, hang on. Oh yeah, here we are. Just takes a population. Is this, so it was, I don't think it's, a generation thing. The population is a vac. The type annotation said vec. Uh, I think you may mean here. Line 76 in the other file. Not 
Not in this file. Oh, right there. We said that the yeah, I get you. The generation said we explicitly said it was a vac pop, and it if we change it to be a vac, then right. Thank you. Um, and then childmaker must implement must have vecpop tied into it somehow. Um, now the question is, is that going to be in the trait child maker or is that in the implementation? Let's go look at the trait child maker. No, it doesn't know anything about vecpop. So it's probably in the implementation of two point yada yada. Uh, oh yeah, right here. We're saying that's a vecpop. And we want to say that's a vac. And this is a vac. And we get yelled at here. Change the parameter type, match the trait. So this suggests that somebody is still thinking this is a vec pop. Who, where? Oh, right there. Vec. Hey, look at that. And so now everything compiles. Main doesn't, but that's going to be in tests, I bet. Indeed, it is in tests. Um, so that's just calling new bit string population. Probably going to need to import. Yeah. And same thing. And that is all of those guys. And then there's some issues in benches. Back pop. I have to import again. And VecPop goes away again. And tournament, presumably the same thing. Yep. Boom. Uh, oops, what am I doing? Import. And now everything compiles. Happy day. Let us make sure that our test pass. Definitely got some clipping warnings to clean up, but that is nice. So let's clean up clippy warnings before we commit. So if we go to lib imports, there's no longer any reference to population. That's interesting. So we use vec, which implements the necessary things and we don't have to s import population or vec pop here for that to work. That's kind of cool. And then lots of references to vec pop in population. So let me run Clippy here. Is there anything else so bare vectors ver bare vectors bare vectors bare vectors bare vectors bare vectors so there's this, an unused import in construction be benchmark um, and an unused import in main and then bare vectors and an unused import in tournament and bare vectors. Okay, so we've got a couple of unused imports. 
construction be benchmarks. We need, we don't need that anymore. Ooh, ah, undo. Grab the wrong thing. And uh, main had an import we didn't need. Nope, not main. Yes, main. Right there. Do, 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 boop. And tournament. I thought it was. Had a unused import. Yeah, in tournament. Tournament, tournament, tournament. Uh, I don't see that. We still have that thing, which we can get rid of. So let's get rid of a bunch of um, vec pop things in population. Uh, population. So there's a whole bunch. Mostly going to be. It's time to get rid of vec pop, actually, I think is the thing to do. So, I think we can get rid of all of this, and things will compile, and except for the tests don't compile, but that's understandable. Um, so we need to get rid of VecPop here. So really, we just want a vector of these guys. And actually, ins is the vector. So we just don't need vec pop at all. Is this test meaningful? Or has it become irrelevant? Well, I guess size is still a thing that's not in VEC, but is in, not in VEC out of the box. Um, and this is kind of, it's really kind of meaningless. Yeah, I don't think that part of the test means anything anymore. So, I think that's a thing. Um, yeah. Well, I guess really the whole thing was testing from Iterator, wasn't it? And now none of that really makes any sense. Um, so really this whole test, I think, is kind of pointless. Um... And then this one, really, it's generate works because we're not calling new. Yeah, so we're calling generate on a vec um, and asserting that we got the right things. Cool. So that makes sense. Now we've got a compile a problem over here why are uh oh because we're now oh this was the unused import it was tournament over in benches not tournament in selectors that's why that was grumpy that makes sense and then if we go back to population we have some import action that we don't need anymore Okay, and now let's try running Clippy again. 
Hey, Clippy's happy. Test pass. And it runs. Whoa! That is very cool. So VecPop is completely gone now. And there are no references to it. Now, I think I just commented all that code out. So let's actually remove it. Um, cool. That is very shiny. I like that a lot. Okay. So what have we done? We've cleaned up. So that was removing a VEC pop. Um, well, it's really, it's removing a call to the new bit string population thing. There's going to be a lot of that. Um, I mean, it's probably really the main thing that happened. Um, is we had to rewrite new bit string and then change all the calls to it. And then change. Uh, oh yeah, I had to make that public. And ignore that. And that was just cleaning that up. So, so I think there's kind of two pieces. There's implementing the new bit string guy, which is here, as a free floating function, and then all the calls to it, um, and then uh, we can talk about removing VecPop after that. Boom, so that's using the new function. That's new, using the new function. This is using the new function. This is, well, this one's using the new function. The others are replacing references to VecPop as a separate piece. Let's stage the first two hunks and let the rest sit. We'll come back to it. That's getting rid of it. That we don't care about. And that's just a bit of random cleanup. Okay, so this is... Um, replace... Oh, yeah, implement... Or, Move new bit string population. Ah, come on. To free function. This moves um, new bit string population from being a method in VecPop to being a free floating function um, and changes all its calls accordingly. So that's what that does, and that does, and that does, and that does. That's actually changing it, and that's changing the call. Okay. So there's that part, and then in lib, we replaced references to VecPop with Vec. And I think that's the main thing that happened there. Yeah. So replace references to VecPop with Vec in lib um, so I don't think we need to say anything else I would just be repeating myself so this is where we actually 
got rid of Vecpop. And I'll throw this little guy in for fun too. Pew, pew. Random is still going to sit there. So this removes Vecpop. We no longer have any references to Vecpop. So we can remove that type um, using vec i everywhere instead. That is very cool. And then we can leave that dangling. So I think that is very nifty. Now. So I feel like we've now dealt with that. And I wonder, now this, this can't, this can't go away in the same way because it has, oh yeah, that could be a thing. That's probably in population. Yeah, look at that. Um, mm, I don't know. It's not because we're testing that. V so really, we're just testing that generation. Um, And we, I think, so vector population generation. Oh, that's a great name. Um, I guess. Oh, I guess we could just do that since there aren't going to be. I think that at some point when this was more complicated, there were the there was the potential of more um, tests, but you know this is actually simplified so much. It's now just population generate and then implementing these things for vectors. So it's got super simple. So yeah, I think that's a good way to do that. Um, uh, We could actually just append that in, I think, on the previous one. And I'd be okay with that. Boom. Cool. Yay! So it is 10 to 3. We've got an hour and a bit left. And there are two things that it seems like we could deal with. One is this question again, the choose. The other is in generation. Um, converting these to be um, not dying references. Uh, by having Dyne References implement Selector and Dyne References implement Childmaker um, to sort of clean this up a little bit. Uh, and then this would just return a Selector. No, yes, that would just return a Selector. Um, and we don't actually have anything that and this, these would then just take the not dine ref things. So I feel like that would be a pretty easy thing to do um, because we already had it at one point and I removed it without, because I didn't have a sufficiently, my vision didn't go far enough into the future. Um, and I realized we'd want those things back. Um, so I kind of think feel like doing that quick, and then 
we can come back to the choose thing um, in a hot sec. So I want to stash you and switch over to main, merge that in. That's done. Um, I want to make a new branch, which is um, replace dine in generation. And then I'll actually I'll just leave that dangling around there for now. And then I won't have to keep seeing it all the time. Um, so, so the goal is to say this is just of type uh, so we wanted to say that this implemented let's go find selector we wanted to say impl boom impl selector for blah. And we're going to need uh, A and P here. Oh, we're going to need the P bounds. And we're now not impling things, so we better fix that. Okay. And so now we're calling select on a dynamic reference to a selector, which is just going to be, oops, self. select oh no hang on self dot select range and population and then there's going to be some type issue somewhere why is that all oh that because it thinks I have an infinite loop so we need to d if that's a dynamic reference to a selector we need to say no make it a selector which i think is this and oh oh i see what you're saying so uh And we could just say P colon colon individual here. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Um, so now a dynamic reference to a selector can be used as a selector. So in generation, let's close a bunch of stuff here. We got a whole bunch of old stuff that we don't need. Actually, I'm going to just close everybody but you. And let's go back to generation. Um, so now we can say this is just a selector of p and this will be a selector of p to make those things line up and actually it probably should be a reference oh 
So I still need dine. Or I think before you had um, S colon selector here, and then this was just type S. That's what how you did that. Now, do we want to have so if we go down that road, we'd have to add S and C for child maker to the generics. Is that useful? Or we rather just have the dine in there. Huh. How do we construct a generation? We hand it a P and a selector and a child maker. So if we think of generic types as inputs, in some ways, we're saying when we create this, we're saying what these things have to be. So providing the types as inputs doesn't seem terrible to me. I mean, it's a little annoying that we add those three generics, but I don't know that it's a an awful way to think about it. Um, well, let's do, let's do the, the selector and see where that takes us. Um, so this returns S, not selector P anymore. And then we're going to have to have this business over and over and over again. That That's the part that's a little annoying. Um, I don't know how many places that's going to have to come up, but I'm guessing several. Make child. Yeah, so the, so we're, it's going to force us to deal with make child as well because eh. they're interrelated. Yeah, so make child again is going to be grumpy. So we have to do that part. Oh, and then oh, this will just be type S. Yeah. Okay. So the two make child calls are the other places that have to be dealt with. Which means I was kind of hoping to do selector and not do make child at the same time, but we may just have to do everybody at once. In which case, uh, maker of P, and this is going to be of type C plus sync and send. Who doesn't like that? I wonder if we're going to need sync and send. Maybe, maybe not. So we're going to have to add that and then C and add that and then C. Um, yeah, it'll certainly tell us if we need it um, when we get there. Let's see, now we're going to have to, the make child in child maker is going to have to get changed. Um, so we have to go find that. Um, so the child maker, 
that's just going to take a selector of P. No. Was this just going to be is this going to take two and this will just be an S? Yeah. Okay. Now that's going to come back here and break something, I bet. Yep, because we need P and S. And we need P and S. Oh, actually, this is just going to become uh, C. This will become P and S. And again, the sink and send or bounder rear their ugly heads somewhere. Um, P and S. Da -da 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 da 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 P and S. And all of generation now compiles. Really? So we're saying a generation is a population a selector and a child maker. P is of type population, S is of type selector of P. Child maker is a child maker of P and S. And all of the rest of this works. So lib is broken because lib doesn't know about the change to the world. And in particular, child maker is going to be busted. So we're going to have to. Um, child maker is now taking two. Um, generics. Does it care about the? Oh, here's the selector right here. So it needs a selector where the individual type is this specific type. So this is going to need to be, let's look at selector. It takes a population. Population has the internal type individual. Womp, womp, womp. So is this just S where S is a selector of EC individual uh, ooh. No, I don't want to pin this down to vectors. So selector of P, which means we're going to have to need P and S. And P is going to be population and P individual uh, do I need to say well maybe I don't not sure. Let's put you there. Whoa, whoa. If we just do that. 
population is generic over, oh, we need to import it. So P's never used here. And that makes it unhappy. Hmm. But we're going to need to refer to it here. So is this going to be like a four? Hey, Wagafa. How you doing? Um... Okay, so let me catch up. So, uh, ooh, I should have been paying attention earlier. You said you should be able to leave that for now and coerce it into a dine selector, but I don't know what that reference to. Um, now, the new, that's here. Oh, so... Um, don't provide, oh no, actually, oh, you were t thinking in generation, actually, I think, don't put all these things here, put them in the new, um, AOC over here. I think that means something different than what you're, you mean. Not sure what you mean, but um, so you're th you're saying that if I oh advent of code yes well you and me both I uh, I think I'm through day three. And today's the 10th. So, oops. I've enjoyed the ones that I've done. I, th I found, I think it was day two. Um, I ended up making a lot of types in Rust in a way that was like really neat because I implemented a lot of from traits to do the parsing. Um, and it made for some very clean sort of mapping pipelines that I liked. Um, so that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I think that's the, th the thing that I, I hadn't really thought about it that way when I started, but, um, as I got into it, it was like, oh, this is a good place to actually sort of use rust types in interesting ways. So, um, yeah, I liked that. Um, so is it to, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm still trying to understand the remove the bounds in the struct and require them only in new. I think you meant here. And so did you actually mean that we would just say, um, whoa, 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 P S C without any, um, yeah. So P S C. Um, uh, and then we would add the constraints here in this guy, which it already has. So I feel like that ought to, oh, and then A doesn't need to be there anymore. Um... And then is A going to disappear from here? Do we use A anywhere? We do not. So interesting. So are we going to get to lose a whole bunch of lifetime noise? That'd be kind of cool. And.
do 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 what 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 oh that's kind of nifty so we're not saying anything about what these are here but we're specifying what they need to be when we implement things on them that's kind of cool um okay now this one's not compiling because we need somebody to be sync and we need somebody to be send so c needs to be send and uh who is it? so C needs to be send. In fact, we probably could remove this from here and put that here. Da -da 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 oops, oops, oops. Okay. And then if we wanted to be consistent with our wares, we could also say that this is selector P. And have all the specs down there. Now, so somebody needs to be sync. Uh, C needs to be... Sync. And send. Waha! Nifty. So the child maker. Um, yeah. And so. And then you said the selector and the popular. Yeah, so these don't really care. So we could probably just make this PSC and then we don't really, it doesn't matter. Because they don't require any of those traits. Now, new also doesn't require any of those traits. and get parent which we talked about actually getting moving out of generation um, because we have selectors but if we leave that be for the moment so get parent does return an individual so we need some constraints. So P needs to be a population for that one, which means we should probably end that block and impl P population S C generation P S C. And now, oh, S needs to be a selector. So S has to be a selector of P. Oh, and is empty. That requires that P be a population. Okay. So that only works if P is a population. And that's only because of the assertion. If we didn't bother asserting that which I actually want probably want to have the assertion um, but um, although 
I could kind of imagine circumstances where a population might be empty, just that so much of the code assumes that it's not. Um, so I don't know. Do I keep that? Or do I not keep that? Um, it's an interesting question. And actually this reference to the empty weight, this weighted set of selectors is completely wrong. It doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. Maybe I actually remove that assertion. And then this does not need to be a population anymore. It can be whatever it wants. Uh, this needs to be a population because this needs to be a selector and the selector has to act on the population, but we don't do child making stuff. So we don't care about C here. Do we actually need all of this? So child maker means p has to be a population and make child takes a selector so i think that does have to be a selector so i expect we need all of the stuff here and that we can't get rid of any of that um like if we were to comment this out, I assume things would break. Yeah. So we would need the from parallel iterator and individual is going to have to be send. And that has to be a selector. Could we comment that line out? I think things will break. Yeah, because child maker needs that to be a selector. And okay, so we need all of that. Um, and then what do we need here? So it, this should be similar to this, but we need the from iterator. However, oh, it's because I've got all this other stuff here. So P. S, S is the type selector of P. And C has to be a child maker because we call make child, yeah. Ah, not a quote mark, not a quote mark, not a quote mark. There we go. Oh, too many. Ah. Cool. Okay. So all of that I buy. Now we've got some compile errors in lib. Um, okay. So here's the first one where this now takes three types and we're only giving it one. So we're going to have to, this is going to get a little ugly. Um, so that's the type of the, come on, uh, population and the type of the selector Actually, I wonder, maybe I just don't even, do I have to, spe oh, I think I have to specify a type to indicate that this is error. I think that's where that comes up. Um, huh. But I could declare that in population. Oh, that actually knows it's an error, but maybe that's because of this. What if we, okay, let's remove that for a second. What evil occurs? No evil occurs? Well, that's fascinating. And it, uh, does, but it doesn't know that that's an error type. So we do have to say that somewhere. Um, 
Hmm. But maybe we say that in the population. Um, just uh, grab that. So this is going to be of type this, I think. Oops, that, uh, uh. Oh, I'm missing a close angle bracket. So that specifies the error type. And now generation, I don't have to specify all that stuff. And now on line 111, that's where we left off. And we were figuring out what we had to do here. Um, So S needs to be a selector. And the problem was we need P to be here somewhere. Oh, A, does A need to be here anywhere? We kind of got rid of A. Yeah, so we can get rid of A, I think. Oh, and this should just be ultimately a child maker. So scorer is holding a dynamic reference to this function, which it to using here okay so that may need that lifetime and that yeah so maybe the two point needs the lifetime even if um uh the other doesn't so so yeah i guess we need the whole population type there that's charming and but it works and then this is just going to be of type s yeah um And then we've got, oh, and us, because make child takes a reference to a selector. Hmm. Should this have been, ah, oh, this should have been and s as well, I think. I don't know what that all just broke. Um, so it broke this here, that should be and, and this should be and, yeah. And then lib, we now have something busted. Generate next and par next don't exist because var why are you grumpy the method next exists but its trait bounds were not satis oh this is probably where um we ended up making uh, okay i can't read this again uh cargo build so next cannot be called generation vec ec 
you alert due to unsatisfied trip bounds. Exists for generation back, yada, yada, yada. But its trait bounds were not satisfied. So which trait bound? The following trait bounds were not satisfied. So weighted, reference to weighted is not a selector. And reference to two point blah, blah, blah is not a child maker. Um, Reference to weighted should be Dine Selector. Uh, so this is on. Where are we here? We are Generation Line 17. Uh, so it must be in generation line 17. Wah, wah, wah. No, well, that's not going to be helpful. Is the problem that that needs to be a reference to a selector? I think that's what's going on. Well, maybe it is. Maybe we do want references to the selector and the child maker all the way through. Um, unless you can make it accept weighted without the reference. So that accepting weighted, that's sort of back here. Um, Uh, no, so we're passing in a reference to the selector here. And it's accepting that. Because a reference to a selector is a selector. You can do and selector as d and dine selector blah, or just selector. So I think you're saying where I make, where I lost myself here, where I make my generation, you're saying that I could just do that. And Presumably, then, also that. Um, and now a whole bunch of stuff breaks because we're trying to hand these things back. And that's not going to be good. Yeah, so we want a reference to a selector here. And that means we're going to want a reference there. Yes. And 84, we're going to have something similar, I think. So... I can't, oh, so I'll have to clone them. Do, that means S is gonna need to be plus clone. And C will need to be plus clone. And 
now we've got a problem up here. Where is the problem? Where is the problem? Uh, oh, maybe I don't have a problem here. I was thinking I did. Um, no, I don't think I do. Okay. And the selectors are ultimately just are, so I guess I'm trying to make sure is this cloning actually going to be doing anything interesting or is this cloning going to like are we going to end up making copies of the internals of the weighted selector over and over and over again which seems kind of gross um, and then par next isn't happy. It's going to be the same problem. Yeah, so we have to say S is clone. And child maker is clone. And then this will be dot clone dot clone. That seems kind of gross. Um, so and then, but the other alternative, I guess, is that these are references and we just keep it. And that means they would have to be, these would have to be dying, right? Oh, then we have lifetimes again. Uh, blurg. Blurg, blurg, blurg. Put that back. Um, okay, so uh, does everything compile? I think no. Lib does not compile. Lib is grumpy. What, lib, we've been there. We did this. Uh, we fixed you. I thought. Um, oh. This doesn't implement clone and weighted doesn't implement clone. So we're going to have to derive clone on those guys. Blah. So, so let's see. This struct will have to derive clone on that one. And then weighted is going to have to derive clone, which is going to force the other ones to derive clone as well I suspect because I don't know how whoops clone I don't know how we're gonna have weighted be clonable if the other guys are not well, we've changed things. For better or for worse, I don't know. Okay. Try clone not implemented for EC individual. Ugh. This is going to just bleed all over the world, isn't it? Um, Okay, well, let's do EC individual because that shouldn't be too big a deal. Um, oh, that, oh, hang on, that already does do clone. Rar? Okay. The trait clone is not implemented for EC individual. But it is implemented for EC individual. 
Um, oh, it says it wants it. Um, actually, I don't even, I'm not sure I understand why we would ever clone an individual, to be honest with you. If I remove that, who all breaks and why? Go to weighted and remove the derived clone. Okay. And then I think that's the same two oops, lines. Method next cannot be called due to an unsatisfied trait bound. So doesn't satisfy weighted as cloned. The drive puts a P clone that we don't need. So you're saying we want to implement our own weighted so that we don't end up implementing cloning on P. Is that, I think, the deal? So, so then we would, so let's do that here. Impl clone for weighted P and uh, that's going to require a method clone. Oops, come on. Oh, stop it. Uh, missing members. So it actually needs the Lifetime, yeah, fine. So, oh, it actually gave us what seems to be a pretty reasonable version of clone. I don't know if I need the clone on EC individual, like everything's compiling now. I'm not sure why this ever had clone. In general, I don't know that I want to clone individuals if I can help it, because it seems to me that that's a memory management mess waiting to happen. So if everything's working, I'm not sure I'm going to, I want the clone back here. I'm not sure why it was ever there. Um, uh, it's a little annoying that this has to be cloned all the time because it doesn't ever change. So we're sort of making lots of copies of the same thing for each generation. And yeah, okay. So you're saying, let's not worry about that problem right now. Um, and we can come back. Yeah. Um, so let's see, are we, are we like actually happy land? Uh, let's run the tests. Got some imports we need to clean up. Test still pass, we run, run works. So generations got some import action. Oh, we got rid of that. Really? Huh. I don't remember where that was in here, but apparently we don't need it anymore. And lib as no, no longer refers to population. 
That's interesting. Oh, it was in the assert. Yes, thank you. Um, so we run it just to be paranoid. Rerun the tests to be paranoid. Rerun Clippy on everything. Aha! Uh -huh. So there are some Clippy things. Um, generation. The selector could be a const. Sure. Why? I wonder why that wasn't. And uh, new in generation could be a const. Wah, wah, wah. And let's rerun Clippy. Yay! Clippy's all happy. So now I think this is a committing point. Uh, what time is it? Oh, we got 20 minutes. Okay. So what have we done? We uh, Oh, I'm looking at the last commit. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Okay. So child maker now takes a selector is generic in selector and selector generation is generic in selector and child maker. I think those are going to be the main things and the rest of it is chasing around making all that work. Um, oh, we're cloning selector and child maker. Da -da -da -da. And I got rid of the clone there. I'm gonna make a note. I'll commit that separately. Um, da -da 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 -da. Removed clone der derivation from EC individual. Not sure why that was there, but in general, I prefer not to be cloning individuals if we can help it. Um, lib is more of the parameterization of child maker and selector and waited we had to add clone um, implement clone for waited um, needs to be clonable since we're currently copying the selectors from one generation to the next um, uh, the derived clone uh forced population to be clonable which wasn't good so we did an explicit implementation ah, uh, okay so that takes care of that and then i think the rest of this is all making the generics happen. Yeah. And generics and oh, that's different. Okay, I'm gonna take these first three. We'll come back to selector in a second. So 
So this is all make generic generation generic in three types. Uh, makes generation generic in types for the population, the selector, and the child maker. Um, that selector impl currently isn't used. Right. So I won't even, I won't commit that. I want to come back and make sure I know what's going on there. Um, uh, this also required that child maker be generic in a type for the selector. Yeah. Um, Um, and in the process, um, generation no longer holds references to the selector and child maker, which is why they need to be clonable. Boom. Okay, so we're not using that at the moment. So, um, so the fact that we're not using this, so it's in selector, yeah. Uh, that's what I was thinking. So we have this, but we're never, we're never using a dynamic reference as a selector. And so the idea, if I understand it, is that we should be able to pass in a dynamic reference and we'll need something similar for child maker, right? I think we'll have to do a similar impl for child maker so that we can pass in a reference um, child maker and that's going to take P and S so that's going to need to be S colon selector P um, for a dying child maker P and S and Oh, it's not going to, it's going to be make child. And we don't have the pop anymore. Uh, oh, we don't have the A. Oh, yes, we do. Because that's part of this over here. Um, So that's going to take that. That's going to take that. We're going to need to have selector. Oh, we're going to need two. I don't know if we're going to need two or not. S. And we're going to return a individual. But we're not going to do select. We're going to do make child. No, self. That was right. Make, make child and selector. No lifetimes at all. Because. Oh, we're not. Oh, we're making children, so we make new things, right? Um, uh, th and th 
still oh yeah ampersand died right uh, and we do want references okay because that right so the specification up here takes references that returns a not reference and voila okay so that takes care of that then in generation so what what changes here is when we construct a generation we ought to be able to pass in a dying reference and that happens in lib yeah so when we make a generation here we ought to be able to pass a reference to those two things except that didn't work. Um, ampersand selector as dying selector. And am I going to have to specify stuff there? Oh, maybe not. And then I'll have to do the same thing, child maker as and that's got two thingies, so we're gonna need to have two thingies. Ho! Oh! Did that work? No, almost though. Um, oh, jeez. So something needs to be send that isn't, which isn't surprising. Oh, and there's sync and send. So something has to be sync and send that isn't sync and send at the moment. Uh, now, does that mean we just have to be more specific about what the types are? So, and sync, no, oh yeah, I need to have parentheses, so I need to say that, like that, no, oh, I think the, Parentheses go there. Yes. So that, so selector. So who needs to be? I'm going to do this in the terminal because it makes my head hurt. So, so selector. Sync send is not selector child maker so child maker child maker needs its selector to be no the child maker needs to be sync i think Oh, here we go. Child maker needs to be sync and send. So that's the piece that's missing. Okay, let's hit some new lines here because it's getting really long. Um, 
boom, 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 plus sync, plus send. Does this need to be sync and send also? No, that did not solve the problem. Uh, computers, 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 computers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ugh. Child maker, test results. So this part makes it look like maybe I need the sync and the send in where impl selector for dyn selector add another impl oh so you think we want for this plus sync plus send Um, oh, and an ambiguous type again. And now we're grumpy because we don't implement. Oh. Uh, RAR? So it doesn't see those two things as different. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Apparently. Um, and so your hope is that this will make... it stop fussing. So this is going to be this plus sync plus send. And oh, it compiles. And it's happy over here. Now, and we still need these, right? If I take these out, bad things will happen. Or not. I didn't need those. Why did I not need those? Because presumably I can get rid of this as well. Uh, no. Now this fails. So maybe I did need those. What? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just slow to respond. Oh, and I guess I just need to bring that back. So that's interesting. The the child maker needs this, but the selector didn't. Hmm. That's interesting. Now, then the other question I have is, do we need both of these? Oh yeah, we can have a look at the bounds on par next. Par next. The child maker is clone plus sync plus send. The selector is not. So that's why that was fussy. And now do we need the clone anymore? Um, since we're passing references. 
I guess we still do because otherwise we can't call clone here. Yeah. Um, and we're just by because we're passing these references, the cloning's really cheap. Um, so we're no longer cloning the whole weighted struct. We're just cloning a pointer to the weighted struct. So that's like no big deal. Interesting. Very cool. And then do we still need both of these? Or is this one just never being used now? Um, like if I comment this out, does the world still compile? No, it does not. Interesting. Huh. Oh. One send, one send plus sync, and one with nothing. So you would say and actually you've been saying it this way and if we're going to do those three you'd have this as well so is this something you can explain explain why quickly in a chat or is this frankly long and burdensome and we don't really want to get into it right now because I don't think I have an obvious sense of why one would have all three of them nope stop me um Oh, okay. I will check that. So we've actually run long, um, and I should probably stop. Let me actually check the, um, let's check Clippy. Be happy, Clippy. Be happy. Yay. And the tests. Um, and I'll finish the commits and stuff later. But this is awesome. I think we're in great shape. Um, and we made a lot of progress today. Um, so I will be here Tuesday and Wednesday as normal. Um, but probably those will be the last uh, streams uh, before the holidays. Um, yeah, some benchmarking would definitely be good. I need to definitely work on that. Um, uh, so... We should have at least two more than the holidays. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm coming back yet. That's still to be determined. Um, but I'll post on uh, Discord and Twitter if Twitter hasn't completely collapsed in a heap, um, uh, which it seems to want to do. Um, but I think we've made a lot of progress. And I think you're right about the benchmarking. We should make sure. I really want to see what impact this had on like tournament and um, random selection uh, and make sure that they still go zippity fast like I suspect they will. Um, but I'm going to take off and you're all wonderful people and thank you very much. I will be back Tuesday uh, 10 to noon and then Wednesday night 7 to 9 and hopefully we'll get some more stuff done. So goodbye. See you later.